friends, as we sit here in permanent PJ mode, I am really excited to just get an opportunity, kids and all, so just be prepared for toddlers popping up in uh, the middle of this video. So, um, but this was too important to not start recording. As most of you have possibly read, I write, I'm starting to write a lot about um, parts of my marriage testimony. If you've read my blog, um, if you have seen previous posts, there are things that I am now starting to talk about that I was not talking about for a really long time. A lot of my close friends <clears throat> kind of know and have been uh, involved in really just helping my husband and I heal and rebuild our marriage and I want to gather all of the things that I have learned from mentors, from therapists, and really from my own personal walk with God and revelations and things that he has taught me and um, and spoken to me that I, I want to just be able to, to communicate those things to you in a way that will hopefully give you some hope and encouragement um, in your marriage. I'm gonna do these videos um, regularly, so I want to touch on, on little topics every day. Um, so if you have a specific topic or a specific question, about you know how to handle certain things in your marriage please send me a message let me know because i would love to share some perspective i am not a therapist but i have been um, researching relationships and i used to write a relationship column in orlando when i was in college for a few years was published in an orlando magazine and that's where dear miss mary came from so um, i would love to kind of revive that and star a dear miss mary um, video collection to where I can really address some things that I have learned and again this is all just godly perspective and um, testimony from my own marriage that hopefully will again help you and give you some encouragement in your marriage regardless of where you are even if even if you're single you know that marriage is hard you've heard marriage is hard that there are seasons where you're doing great and then there's seasons where Oh no, daddy's here. I don't hear him, but okay. Um, today I just want to talk about disconnection, feeling disconnection in your marriage. Because that has come up surprisingly a lot in my friendships. I've had a lot of girlfriends, you know, that we all stay connected during, especially during this time, and talk about what to do when we feel disconnected in our marriage. So I'm going to give you four things, okay? So the first one is seasons in your marriage are going to be completely normal. There are seasons for everything. There's a time for everything, like Ecclesiastes says, if you know your Bible. Um, there is a time to reap and there's a time to sow. There is a time to grow within yourself and to kind of be still and be quiet. And there's a time to to act and um, and 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 really pursue things. And so, I want you to really think about: Is this a season where God is trying to give you an opportunity to step back, to grow, and to evolve? yourself not to teach your or tell your husband how to evolve and grow but an opportunity for both of you to kind of take a breath take a step and do some soul searching okay this is completely normal and it's good for your marriage it is good for growing in deeper and more intimate um, relationship with one another okay um, write down the things that you find in, in your soul searching and we'll work on that later number two Learn to be under, learn to understand instead of being understood. Sometimes, well, especially me, I want my spouse to understand why I'm acting a certain way or saying a certain thing, and I am the vocal one. He is the one that's just non-confrontational. He just doesn't want to know. He doesn't want to fight. He doesn't want to talk about it. And so it is really important for me as a type A personality, I need to stop, step back, and begin to understand who he is. What is his personality like? Or maybe what is he going through right now? What's going on in his work? What's going on? Maybe start asking him questions, um, not in an interrogating way or, you know, obviously tone is everything, but um, 
take an interest in your spouse. Take an interest in maybe what's going, what they're going through. Maybe they're feeling a certain way that they're just too shy or too proud to tell you about. It's very common for especially men to hold things in and not want to talk about them. And sometimes women too, you know, there's a lot of times that women are like that too. So this is a season where you need to focus on understanding your spouse instead of being understood. This is an opportunity for you to get to know your husband or your wife more. Practice listening and shut your mouth. Learn how to shut your mouth. That was a big one for me. And just listen because you will find out a lot of things when you listen. And also learn how to serve your spouse. This is a huge one because a lot of us, whenever we feel threatened or intimidated or insulted or disrespected, we don't want to serve. We kind of withhold, right? We withhold things. We withhold love. We withhold um, serving the person, taking care of the person. Well, you need to fight that and begin to actually serve the person because even if they are being harsh or cold or disconnected to you, serving and loving covers a multitude of sins. We know that scripture, right? Love covers a multitude of sins. So you would be surprised as to how much you will accomplish breaking through hard shells of your spouse when you just learn to love without expectation. Love and serve without expectations. Number three is learn to let go. This I'm gonna do a whole uh, video on because it's necessary. How do you even let go? You know, it's like, oh, you gotta just let it go. Okay, let me just flip that switch. Well, I know that's harder said than done, but or easier said than done. But letting go, let me just give you an overview. First of all, give yourself a break. Give your spouse a break. This is a really tough time right now in our country. Um, psychologically, internally, we have to deal with, if you have children in the house, having them full time, you have to deal with the emotions of what the heck is going on, who do I trust, who's telling me the truth, what's gonna happen with our finances, what's gonna happen with our jobs. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on you, so you need to give yourself a break and give your spouse a break, okay? Just try to take a breath and understand what's going on and that it's okay to feel a certain way or to fear or to have anxiety because it's normal. You're responding to something unknown and, and confusing and a big change that could affect your life. So it's okay. You also have to learn how to set healthy boundaries. Um, a great book for this is Boundaries and Marriage. Okay, you need to know where your property line ends of the things that you're responsible for, the things that you say, the things that you do, um, and then what is the responsibility of the other person. So this is a huge way to learn how to let go because the moment that I stop trying to force my husband to read his Bible or to tell him what to do in this area and this area in his life and just start focusing on myself and letting go of all that other stuff, there was a lot more peace in my home, okay? So you've got to set healthy boundaries and know what things to just put in God's hands, let it go, stop complaining about it, stop nagging about it, it's not gonna help. I've tried to nag, I've tried to negotiate, I've tried to logically talk about things, just to, why, why wouldn't he understand it when I say it this way? Well, what if I say it this way? Doesn't work, doesn't work. And know your part, know the things that you're doing to kind of push or, or take or, or steal that piece away from your relationship. Okay, um, know the things that you are doing, whether it is your fear, your your jealousy, your um, insecurities, um, maybe something that is rising up from your past, from your childhood. That, like we said in the first step, this is a time to do soul searching. So the last step that um, that I want to give you is to heal, to Focus and pursue healing in this season of disconnection more than you've ever pursued before. This is when, personally, I had to make sure that I had my spiritual mentors, people that I reached up to, that I reached out to and did life with, to get some accountability, to make sure that they were speaking the truth of God's word to me, to cast out all the lies that were building fear and building things that were not true in my mind, okay? Start doing some deep, deep searching uh, um, of maybe things that in your past you have not healed from. 
and we'll again go into that a little bit more as we get deeper into the series of marriage but um, go seeing a therapist seeing a marriage therapist a Christian therapist um, Kathy Cunningham I love you you have helped me stay sane during my um, healing phase dealing with um, PTSD with my marriage so there's a lot of serious things that come that that kind of sometimes uh, rise to the surface in these seasons of disconnection because that is when all of our fears and all of our insecurities and maybe the pain from our past kind of pop up so this is when you need to pursue healing of yourself and take the focus off what your husband or what your wife is doing and put the focus strictly on you figuring out how you can respond better. Now I will say in closing that if this requires medication, I will tell you that for years and years and years, I was completely against any kind of anxiety or antidepressant medication. You can ask my husband. I tried it once, I flushed it down the toilet. I just, I was like, no, Jesus can heal me. This is, this is something that is a really sensitive topic sometimes, but I wanna encourage you that sometimes, yes, Jesus can do it, but sometimes we need to just get into a place mentally, especially if we're dealing with serious traumas, PTSD, um, we need to, we need our minds biologically, hormonally to be, we need a, an even playing ground. We need a place where we can start from scratch to rebuild and to heal. And sometimes some of us are just not okay after so much trauma and it's okay temporarily, I believe to pursue medication low doses, whatever you need, to just take the edge off and begin to make the right decisions to pursue healing. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Tomorrow I wanna to talk more about what to do when you your marriage is really on the rocks, when you are in a position where you are facing divorce, where you just don't know if there's any hope for your marriage. I wanna to talk to you a little bit more about that tomorrow. So stay tuned guys, I love you, have a great day.